In this video we discuss exception handling in Java. Exception handling is particularly important because there may be scenarios in which your application needs to gracefully handle any errors that may occur. Now Java's exception handling mechanism can be reduced to what we call a try-catch statement but there's more to it and we'll see that in effect um, very shortly. Now the example that we're going to use to bring all of these concepts out is uh, a simple a simple stack, let's call it a stack API where, whereby it's a collection of uh, a few classes that implement uh, a stack or the, uh, the model behavior of a stack. Now if you if you are kind of fuzzy on, on stacks maybe this illustration can help. Now a stack uh, is typically illustrated like this uh, when items go into the stack, they are considered to be pushed onto the stack. And when items come out of stack, they are considered to be popped out of the stack. So an item that goes into the stack sort of sits there. And as more items are added to the stack, the height of the stack increases. Similarly, when items are popped off of the stack, the height of the stack decreases. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to model a simple stack in Java and then from there we are going to work with this to bring out exception handling concepts using um, using Java's exception handling mechanisms. So fire up NetBeans, uh, create a project. We can call our project um, stack sandbox. Alright, let's just change that to API stack API dot stack sandbox. Alright, so once this is up, we're going to create our first class which is our stack class uh, under this package new Java class, we call it stack. Well, our stack class really is the representation of what we just sketched here, including the behaviors as well. So, what we're going to need in particular are a few attributes to that stack class, namely the height that I just spoke about. Remember the height keeps track of the next open position of the stack depending on how many um, elements are already in the stack. Okay. Also we'll need something to represent those elements and we're going to use a simple array, a, a Java array. But it's going to be of type object. Reason being is that we want this this structure of ours to be as reusable as possible. So we're going to type it according to the generic object type. Um, and as we know, everything extends from object um, within the Java API. So we can store a wide variety of items um, within our, our stack. So we're going to type it object and call that elements. So this would represent those buckets for instance, within the stack. Similarly, uh, well, a stack is, is of a finite size, so we are going to give it yet another attribute and call it size. Okay, so that would define the maximum size of our stack. Uh, for the constructors, we will actually create an overloaded constructor in addition to the default constructor. The reason being, again, we want to we wanna always code with a lot of uh, flexibility in mind. So just in the event that a user um, wishes to just instantiate the stack and begin using it with a default size, we will accommodate that. So our first constructor will cater to that scenario. So we type something like this with no arguments. Okay, But what we do within the constructor itself, so this is our default constructor.
and it will assume an initial size of let's say 5 okay so what is doing there we're, we're just setting we're hard coding that value of 5 to the private attribute size in the next line we are going to create our array of elements and pass to it the size which is um, as previously stated here 5 uh, we may also want to initialize the height when we create the stack the height would be 0 so Zero. There we go. So this is our default constructor for our uh, stack data structure. And we are going to create an overloaded constructor. And our overloaded con constructor takes an argument. And with this argument, we can actually uh, have any anyone specify the the predefined size of the stack so it'll range beyond five or below five depending on um, what's what's specified here we can throw some some additional logic within this constructor to ensure that the user doesn't pass in a size that is um, uh, not a number or invalid or a negative number in that regard but we're just gonna keep it simple for now just to get the concepts across again we still need to um, to complete this this particular structure and use it in a practical way to bring out aspects of exception handling in Java. So we're going to make a small comment here. This is our overloaded constructor. This dot size equals size. So it's going to take the value that's passed in through the constructor's argument size and relay that value to the class's attribute size, right? Referenced by the this keyword. Similarly, we create uh, our array. But in this case, um, this dot size will contain <coughs> any any size that's passed into our constructor through the size argument of the constructor. Here again, we initialize our height to zero. Okay, so our constructors are finished. Now we're going to move on to some utility methods. Now our stack needs to to behave in a certain way as illustrated here. Our stack needs to be able to accept objects or elements or items that are pushed onto the stack through the push behavior. Now that what that push behavior does, or what it should do, is it should uh, add an item to the current position according to the height. So for instance, if the height is zero, then push will add that item to position zero. In addition to that, push should also, after adding the item, increment the height. So the next push will actually push the item onto that position, which is just on top of the last item, according to how stacks work. All right. So that means push every time something is pushed onto the stack will increment the height after it has added the item to the particular stack according to the position, the current position as represented by height. Okay, so we're gonna try to create that behavior within our um, method called push. Now push would take an argument because it's actually accepting it's, it's accepting an, an element to be pushed onto the stack. So 
we're going to use the generic we're going to, we're going to keep using the generic uh, object type to offer that flexibility in future implementations of this stack all right so push will take an argument of type object and we just named it o uh, we said that what push would do is it would assign that object to the current position the current vacant position in the next position on the stack as indicated by height so what that looks like in code is this elements represent the buckets okay and height represents the current position and we'd like to assign O to that current position but in addition to that we want to increment height after we have assigned the object so again it's just as illustrated here after we have nothing inside for instance and we have pushed something push an element onto the stack we want to assign that element to the to the correct bucket to that position there in addition to that we want to move this arrow we want to be able to move that cursor that pointer to the next position so that when we push again it won't overwrite the previously pushed item instead it'll push the item and save it on top and it'll keep doing that so every single time we push we have to increment height and height is the is the pointer so to speak that uh, represents the current position within the stack so the way we can do this is by throwing another line after this and say height plus plus but we can also just keep the code as compact as ever and add that right there okay it would turn out to be the same thing so we've implemented our push behavior and now we're going to implement our pop behavior now pop is the opposite of push and pop is uh, the behavior that that pop implements is that it takes the topmost item of the stack off and it returns it to whoever calls pop okay in addition to that it decrements the height so that means that after this item is removed we want to move the height to the element before it or at least um, reduce the height in that regard so we're doing the opposite here in pop so we're returning something so we have to we have to specify the return type again we're using object we want to maintain that and um, pop doesn't need to take any arguments because um, you know we don't need to accept any any additional details to pop an item off all right we, but we do need to return something so in this case we're gonna need something that's similar to this line but we need a return statement because pop is actually returning the element so we need to look inside of elements all right and we can say you know return the element at the current height and that would work but in addition to that we'd like to also decrement the height as well now decrementing here needs to happen um, in in the correct sequence so we are going to actually tell the the compiler to return the height and then decrement and this is why we thro throw the the minus signs before it okay so this is going to successfully return the element to the current height position and then decrement that height value afterwards so this is what this line takes care of so we have the makings of our stack as you can see here so we have our um, are overloaded constructors whereby we can have a default size with no arguments in that first constructor or if in the event that we need to um, specify the size the predefined size of our, our stack we can with this constructor okay and once we have our our stack set up our push will take an object and add it to our collection of elements within the stack and it will maintain a current height value so after we push something on the stack the height increases if we pop something on the stack the height decreases 
So let's let's give this a try. So we are going to go to our stack sandbox at Java, and we will create our stack object. Call it S. All right. After create our stack, we're going to try to push some things onto the stack. Now I'm going to use uh, string literals just for just uh, for simplicity's sake. Um, in this case. Now keep in mind that we're using the default constructor of the stack, which initializes the stack to five elements large. So the stack can hold no more than five items at a time. So we are going to add three of them. Let's add four. Okay. And then we're going to pop them and print them out. Now, uh, as you may recall, pop returns the elements that have been previously pushed onto the stack. So we can pop a number of times to return a number of elements. So we're going to use the print statement to return and print out the contents of the of the popped element. So you can imagine that at this line, when we pop that item, the last item that went into the stack will be the first item that came out that comes out of the stack. And we can we can uh, throw a few more statements like these. Okay, so we're gonna push four times and pop three times. So given that everything um, is in order we can run this and we'll see the results here so we've pushed the then quick then brown then fox but we've popped only three times which means that the last one in which is fox should be the first one out and it is so our, our structure is actually working like it's supposed to work however in the event that uh, let's say we do things or, or cer certain things are done to our stack um, that shouldn't be done to it, such as this, adding more items than the stack can actually hold. Okay, so we've added more items than our stack can, can currently hold. And if we try to run that, you'll find that, you know, Java throws an error at you. Now the error that you, that you see here is the stack trace from the exception that was eventually encountered by our main method here. Now this exception um, is a runtime exception uh, that Java sort of detects and throws on your behalf. Your application or the application right now is not handling the exception in any way. Java's runtime environment is handling exception in, in the best way Java's runtime environment can. But there may be cases whereby we want to gracefully um, handle those 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 particular exceptions in our specific in a in a specific manner, um, depending on how we are implementing our applications. And this is one of the the good things exceptions exception handling the exception handling mechanism in Java brings to the table. So what what has happened here is that our program has actually stopped in its tracks. It has actually um, crashed. So we never got to our println statements down below, as you can see here, because there's no result. So that's what happens when exceptions are thrown and not um, gracefully uh, handled. The program quits or halts in its tracks, and we get these, these um, error messages thrown out at us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to explore the tricat statement. Okay, so we are going to implement a try catch block which will gracefully handle any exceptions in the event that they are thrown. 
Now the code is set up to deliberately throw an exception as, as we've seen. Um, so using this particular construct, we're able to handle, rather detect first, and then handle any exceptions that may be thrown uh, within our code. So how this works typically is that we identify the block of code that may potentially throw an exception um, for some reason or the other, and we wrap that block of code within the try block, as you can see here. In addition to that, once that try block is in place, we have effectively set up the first part of the construct, the try catch construct, that detects any exceptions that may be thrown by the Java exception handling mechanism, the control flow mechanism. Now we know that the exception that will be thrown in this case is an array out of bounds exception because um, our stack is built on an array and we're trying to add an element to the array that exceeds the size of the array, that exceeds the addressable space within the array and that that is not allowed. So what we can do in this case is detect that particular exception and handle it gracefully. The way we handle it is by the corresponding catch statement that looks something like this and we can optionally throw in the array out of bounds exception which is what we saw dumped out to screen earlier. All right. An array out of bounds exception <coughs> is part of um, array index. Sorry, array index out of bounds exception. Okay. Uh, we can we can gracefully detect that thrown exception object and and handle it within this block of code. So handling it would entail, let's say, we can print a message out. Dot print one. Okay. Stack limit reach. Okay, so we can print a message like this out. Okay. So let's run this and see what it looks like. So stack limit reached. So we see we we're no longer seeing the 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 stack trace or at least the the dump that we saw earlier when we weren't handling the errors gracefully in this case our program is exiting or, or throwing that exception somewhere around here and immediately it passes control to our catch block which handles that particular th uh, exception object in this case like i mentioned it's the array out of bounds exception object now many of these exception objects extend from the parent exception class. All right, so that means that if we if we don't care to distinguish among the various exception exceptions that are thrown, the various exception objects that are thrown, and we just um, desire uh, just desire just detecting any general exception and reporting on it in a general way, then we can opt to do something like this, where we just say exception. And in that case, it'll work just the same, stack limit reached, all right? But there may be cases where we need to individually distinguish the types of exception objects and handle them in different ways. In such case, using the top level exception class, or exception object class, um, exception object may not be um, ideal. So we're actually going to move forward a bit and um, illustrate how we can create our own exceptions and how we can throw them whenever we need to throw them. Okay, and this is basically what we call raising of exceptions. Okay, so we have a stack class here that has behaviors that are a bit unstable, and this isn't quite recommended simply because if we want to redistribute this and have it reused elsewhere and used safely safely um, our our stack class needs to be as robust as possible it needs to handle any undesired events in execution um, that may arise 
So what I'm going to illustrate right now, which will build on what we learned in terms of this try catch statement, is <clears throat> raising of exceptions. All right. And to do that, we are going to create our own custom exceptions. So the plan is that whenever, let's say, a push is executed and we detect you know, something that shouldn't happen, <clears throat> we want to throw our own push exception, which is our own custom type of exception, which extends the exception class. Similarly, if we, if we want to pop something off of that stack and um, something uh, happens that we don't want, uh, we can call we can we can actually raise a pop exception all right which will be detected and handled separately and apart from the push exception <clears throat> so in such a case what we can do is create two classes so we'll head over to our package and we'll create two classes the first of which is our push exception <clears throat> okay and like I mentioned all exceptions in Java extend the exception class right? and uh, the exception class what this affords is this uh, uniformity structured uh, manner of uh, representing actual exceptions um, within Java and it lends itself to generically detecting and handling an exception of any kind okay so this class is a very very simple class is called push exception for now it will not take anything in this case it'll be essentially an exception class but under our own name push exception all right we're gonna do a similar um, we're gonna do something similar with puff exception so we create another class call it pop exception we hit finish and um, we extend exception so what we've essentially done with creating these classes is we've defined our exceptions keep in mind that with inheritance we can we can add our own custom attributes if we needed to to add even more information specific to each of our defined exceptions okay so where these will come in is um, within our stack class where we will raise them now raising exceptions involve a couple of things the first of which we have to let the compiler know that a particular method of ours actually throws out an exception which means that the compiler will ensure that whenever that method is called or attempted to, to be called it will let the developer know that it has to wrap and has to it has to wrap it in a try catch statement and it has to detect a certain type of exception so this is sort of um, adhering to this to, to Java's exception handling mechanism um, in the form of a protocol that's, um, that ensures that the developer follows a certain standard to ensure that um, the exception, if thrown, is handled gracefully. So in this case, we to raise exceptions, we add the keyword throws and we're going to reference our push exception in this case that we just created okay push exception uh, similarly with pop we say throws pop exception okay but we're not finished yet this is just part of raising exceptions this just tells uh, the compiler that these guys actually throw exceptions of a particular kind but we need to to implement a position within the method itself where the exception is actually thrown so this is where a condition comes in so the the way that this would go is that we would attempt to detect when we're we're trying to push something onto a full stack and then we're out we're actually going to do the raising there to to raise the push exception similarly we want to detect if our stack is empty and if it is and we still try to pop we want to raise the pop exception and throw it okay so what we need are two additional methods called um, is empty and is full 
and what these methods will do it will they will just detect um, height and then report a boolean value accordingly so we'll just add them here and they look like this so like I mentioned the height represents the the current position the current um, available position within the stack it also gives us an indication of whether the stack has elements in it or not and this is what we're, we're capitalizing on here so is empty will will detect it will say if um, height equals zero then return true else return false okay so height is only zero when we have nothing in the stack similarly is full will detect if our stack um, if our stack's height or rather yes if our stack's height is equal to the size to the maximum size or the capacity of our stack so we do uh, something like this if height equals equals size then return true else return false so with these helper methods is empty and is full we can begin to raise the exceptions inside of push so we first detect we say if is empty sorry if is full because this is push <coughs> then we say throw new push exception okay so we can imagine that at this line if this statement holds true a push exception object will be thrown at which point this entire method will re will relinquish control to the the try catch block that may be uh, eventually handling this or to the calling um, block of code that may be handling this all right so this item here this line here will will not execute as long as this condition holds true okay so we can put a similar statement here if is empty then throw new pop exception Alright, so with these in place, we've essentially added statements to raise exceptions within these behaviors to make them a bit more robust and to make them uh, report on any possible exceptions in a standard manner as described by the Java exception handling mechanism. And what this affords us is the ability to extend what we've started here okay <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're going to run this code again and we see it's the same result but instead of exception we can say push exception all right and we we notice there that in the event of adding push exception these lines here light up the reason why they light up is because by popping things we actually need to and the compiler is telling us we need to handle the pop exception as well 
So this is what I was speaking about earlier. As long as we're raising exceptions and we have these statements here, rather, these statements here, throws pop exception, throws push exceptions, um, the compiler won't let us proceed unless we handle those exceptions individually. And what we can do to, to appease the compiler, um, which would also show us another aspect of exception handling in Java, is by handling both of these exceptions in turn by using, um, let's say, multiple catch statements. So we can continue to add additional other catch statements that, that catch different um, exception objects. In this case, pop exception. Okay. And we can print a statement that looks something like this. Stack is empty. All right, so with this in place, we can run it, and we get the same result, but we're actually individually handling a push exception and a pop exception. And the way we can um, detect this is by trying to pop more than we we actually have inside of our our structure. So we'll just comment some of these lines out up here to have us push three and pop four. And you'll notice that the statement down here will change because there's gonna be a different exception object that will be thrown. All right, so we can see here, we, we're actually getting a few items out and then it reports that the stack is empty. That means that we're trying to pop again and it gracefully reports that the stack is empty. All right.